I hope you're well and that you are having a good month so far. This is going to be my vlog for the magical readathon created by Book Roast that is going to be happening during the month of September. And I'm actually really excited about this readathon because it has a fantasy magical theme and I know that the creator was actually doing Harry Potter themed readathons for a while and I never got to participate because I just heard about this whole booktube community very recently and I'm really really excited to participate in this one. My crystal just came off my nail. <laughs> that's kind of disappointing, but that's okay because I actually wanted to change my nails fairly soon and I wanted to create a whole manicure based on the readathon theme. Although it might not be the next one because I have a video to film. Anyways, <laughs> let's get back to the readathon before I get too distracted by this nail tangent. This readathon is fantasy based and she created a whole new world which sounds really really interesting and I can see that she put a lot of work into it. By the way, I will have the creator's original video linked in my description box down below in case you are curious and want to check it out. I'm not going to go into too much detail because she does that in her video, but briefly the premise of the readathon is that we're kind of making our way to a magical academy where in the future readathon we're going to be kind of completing tasks to acquire a degree, which also sounds very, very cool. But for now, we're just making our way there. And in order to actually complete the readathon, she said that you only need to read two books, but there are a whole bunch of prompts that you can do generally. And the whole readathon is set up as a map, and you kind of go along your way and until you finally reach the final destination, which is the Magical Academy. And it is really, really pretty. So I'm definitely going to be printing out that map soon and I'm kind of going to be marking my path along it as I complete the prompts, which I'm hoping to complete all of them, but I really, really want to complete at least two so that I can complete the readathon. Another interesting thing about it is actually that you also get to build your character. And this doesn't have to be done in September, you can do that into next year because that is when you will need your characters and there are some prompts in order to do that as well. So let me just tell you a little bit about some of the prompts. I'm not going to tell you about all of them, but I will later on as I actually read books for them. For now, just let me tell you about some of the plans I have for this readathon. Again, I haven't really planned it out very thoroughly just because I'm a big mood reader, so <laughs> I tend to pick up books as I kind of feel like reading them. So I don't like to plan out my um, reading plans too much. I do have a TBR for every month and Whenever I want to pick up a new book, I kind of go there first, but if nothing calls to me on that TBR, I'll just choose something else. Anyways, let's get into the prompts and what I'm kind of planning to read for them vaguely. So the first prompt is called The Novice Path, and that is to read a book with a map. And there aren't a lot of books with maps, so I definitely wanted to plan that one out. And for this, I actually kind of googled fantasy books with maps. And I came up with the fifth season, which was actually on my TBR for a while, on my general TBR, that is, not for my September TBR, and Graceling, which, same. I've had it on my TBR for a while. So I'm definitely going to be picking up one of these two books for this particular prompt, because I just don't have a lot of options of books with maps, and these two are appropriate. So it's gonna be one of those for sure. I hope you didn't just hear my stomach growling. I'm a little bit hungry, so if you do hear it growling every once in a while, I'm really sorry about that. Um, anyways, let's keep going. Prompt number three is called Mists of Solitude, and that prompt is to read a standalone. And for that, I'm actually thinking of picking up one of the books on my September TBR, which is The Last Legacy. It's coming out fairly early in September, so I think I'll definitely be able to get to it in this readathon and I'm actually really excited about reading it, so that should work very well. By the way, another noise that you might be hearing is crows. Um, they've been fairly loud lately. It's kind of between sweet and annoying because I really like animals and I actually really really like crows because I think that they are gorgeous, but sometimes it's annoying because sometimes they can be very very loud and even wake me up when I'm sleeping, so yeah, I have mixed feelings about the crows, but if you're hearing calling, then it's probably the crows. <laughs> Number seven is the Aurelium Arc, and it is a prompt to read a book with a school setting. And I actually have the perfect book for this on my September TBR, but it comes out so late in the month that I'm not sure that I'll be able to complete it for this readathon, which is a little bit disappointing. But I 
think that's what I'm going to aim for. Anyways, that book is The Last Graduate, and I actually read the previous book in that series, I believe it's going to be a trilogy, and that is called A Deadly Education. And it was just so much fun, it actually got me out of a reading slump, which is very, very impressive for a book. So. I'm really, really excited to pick up the sequel. By the way, a little bit about these books. They're set in a sort of dark, magical fantasy school setting, so not at all like Harry Potter, but still really, really interesting and really fun because the main character is super snarky. So there are seven prompts for the readathon itself, and then there are some more prompts for the character creation. And I'm hoping to get that done in September as well, but we will see. I'm not going to push myself too hard to do it. And for the character creation, I also have a few plans, so let me just tell you what those are. First of all, I'm planning to name my character Lumiere, which I feel is fairly appropriate for a fantasy-themed readathon. And the first thing you have to choose is if your character is from an urban or a more wild setting. And I chose the wild setting, and for that the prompt is to read a book set outside or in a forest. And for that I'm actually going to be reading one of the books from the Lumberjane series. And I don't really know too much about this series except that it is a series of graphic novels from the fantasy genre, and it's about a summer camp. <laughs> and supposedly some of these books are also involving some mysteries. So they sound like a lot of fun, they have pretty good reviews, and I wanted to pick them up for a while. Also, I have most of the series out from the library, and it's going to expire soon, so I really want to get through as many of them as possible, assuming that I enjoy the first one, of course. I'm actually going to be reading probably more than one volume from this series for this readathon, but we will see. The next prompt is to choose where you're from, and I'm actually choosing between Carador and Etheria, and I'm not sure what I'm going to go for. The prompt for Etheria is to read a book with an elven or fae character, and since I read a lot of fantasy, I'm sure I can find something. And for Carador, it's to read a book from an ongoing series. Again, this shouldn't be very hard. And that is it so far. As you can see, I don't have a lot of plans for this readathon at the moment, but I will of course let you know as I read things what they are, how I'm feeling about them, and generally what my progress is. And yeah, I'll I'll see you when I get some more reading done. <laughs> Bye. I have never actually done this before, and honestly, this feels a little weird. I hope that the quality is okay and everything, because this is actually the first time that I am filming on my phone. And I'm on my phone because I really don't have a lot of time. I'm actually not going to have a lot of time for the rest of this week, so 
Yeah, this this is the best that I can do right now. <laughs> but I still wanted to do a quick update. Also, this felt super awkward for some reason because I'm outside. But I basically just have a few odd minutes before my parents arrive to pick me up. And we are going to spend quite a few days this week together. And I'm really excited about that because I don't actually get to spend a lot of time with my parents lately. And yeah, I took time off, they took time off. It's gonna be great. We're gonna be doing some hiking, we're going to be doing... I have no idea what else, but some hiking. I actually do have a little bit to update you on in terms of my reading, because I have read a little bit of The Dirt on Ninth Grave, I believe that was called. Anyways, the ninth book in the series that I was going to start. Although, now that I'm talking about it, I'm not sure if I even mentioned that I was going to be starting this series again, because I hadn't picked it up for over a year before, and... I just remembered about it while I was reading my last book in August, and for some reason I decided that I was kind of in the mood to pick it up again. I ended up dropping it back in time because it just got really, really boring and repetitive, and the humor that I enjoyed so much in the previous books was just kind of gone. And I'm actually about 10% into the book right now, and honestly, not that much happened, so... um. I'm not super happy that I picked it up and I'm giving it another shot, but who knows, maybe it will get better. It does have some of the humor that I used to enjoy, although, I don't know, it's just not as funny as I thought it was gonna be for some reason, because the first few books were actually really funny, and then the more the series progressed, the worse it kind of became in that sense. So I'm a little bit disappointed, but we will see, I'm still gonna keep reading it. And another really good thing about this book is that it actually has a red cover. So that fits perfectly one of the prompts that I wanted to do. On a more positive note, I actually also started reading Lumberjanes, and I'm about halfway through volume one at the moment, and I have to say I'm loving it. I wanted to read the series initially because I heard really good things about it, and it just sounded like it was gonna be fun and easy and just cute, and that was kind of what I was in the mood for, because I was a little bit because I was in a little bit of a reading slump when I actually started this month, and I just wanted something cute and easy, and I also knew that I wouldn't be having as much time to read because of the aforementioned week. So I, I really wanted something like this. And it is. It's fun, it's easy, it's adorable. I really love the art, I love the humor. It kind of reminds me a lot of Giant Days, which is also a graphic novel series that I'm actually in the middle of reading. It's basically like Giant Days, but for a younger audience, and I don't mind it, because that just makes it easier and, I don't know, cuter, sweeter, kind of. And I feel like that is actually really helping to kind of boost my mood at the moment. That is it in terms of my reading. <laughs> um, I'll try to do a few more updates here and there throughout the week, but I don't know how much I'll be able to update you on or how much reading I'll actually get done. I don't think it's gonna be much. And yeah, after this week is over, I'll definitely be back to normal in that sense, and hopefully this footage is not going to be too awkward or bad and it's not too loud out here. <laughs> I had to go outside because it was way too loud at home because my significant other was doing some repairs and yeah, hopefully outside was better. Anyways, um, I'm rambling a little bit and this is pretty much all I have to say for now. I will see you later.
I know I said that I was going to kind of try to update you as my week was progressing, but I didn't except for that one time because I just didn't have time. I kind of had to keep getting up earlier and earlier as the week progressed just because of what we were doing, so I just really didn't have time to film because I was also getting home super late. Not that I'm regretting anything, it was an awesome week, I really enjoyed it, although I am so exhausted now. So. That's a bit of a downside, but you know, it's a good kind of exhausted. The kind of exhausted you get after doing something that was really fun, but really, really tiring at the same time. And mostly during the week, we just did a lot of hiking and walking and spending time in nature and that sort of thing. So yeah, it was a pretty great week and pretty decent health-wise as well, because a lot of activities that I sometimes engage in are not the best for my health, but this was a really good and healthy week. So that was nice. I also had a whole bunch of not so healthy food during the week, but I think that it's okay to indulge sometimes, especially when you're kind of having a vacation. Anyways, as you can imagine, I didn't get through a lot of reading the... There's a fly. Yee. <laughs> Anyways, as you can imagine, I didn't get through a lot of reading that week just because, well, I didn't have a lot of time on my hands and I was so tired, but I did finish a few things. And the first thing I finished was The Dirt on Ninth Grave, which... I can't remember how far along I was, I think I was like a quarter of the way and something like that the last time I talked to you, but I actually finished the entire book. But I do remember that when I was about a quarter of the way into the book, I kind of wasn't feeling it anymore. I think I enjoyed it in the very beginning because I was just hopeful that the uh, somewhat different storyline that the author went for would make it more exciting. I can't really tell you much about it because it's going to be a major spoiler if you actually do want to pick up the series at some point. Um, I was also expecting the book to be really funny and really sexy, or at least I was hoping that it would be like that because that's what I really liked about the first few books in this series and I felt that that kind of faded away as the series progressed so I was really hoping that the series would be revived in this book and it kind of wasn't. It was better in the beginning but then it just kind of went flat fairly early on. I think it took me until I was about halfway into the book to actually start enjoying it a little bit more and to kind of start to get into the story, which is not great. I mean, not that it's a really long book, but it's kind of closer to the end of the series, so I don't feel like we need a super long introduction before things start happening. Things should kind of be happening fairly early on. And they weren't! I did like the mystery part of the plot, which is something that I also really liked in the earlier books. I just realized I'm not sure if I ever told you what this whole series is about. Um, let me just remedy that right now before I proceed with my review further. So in this series we have Charlie Davidson and she is a Green Reaper. Not many people know her secret, but a few do, including her uncle, who is a detective, and she kind of works with him to help him solve cases because she can see and talk to dead people. Some of the time, especially with a violent crime, dead people kind of tend to stick around as ghosts and she talks to them and helps resolve the crime. Although apparently a lot of the time they also have no idea who killed them just because of the trauma of the experience and they don't really see the person's face. She also has this weird thing going on where she keeps dreaming about this dark, smoky figure, and she's starting to think that that figure might actually be real, and that is mildly concerning. And she is also a private investigator on the side of kind of helping her uncle resolve murders. And there she works with her best friend Cookie, who is her secretary slash researcher slash a whole bunch of other things that Charlie does not pay her enough to do. But again, Charlie doesn't really charge too much for her services because she's mostly doing it to help people. And the series in general is about her solving these mysteries, finding out about who and what she really is, kind of discovering her powers and figuring out what her relationship with the mysterious shadowy figure is. By the way, the light keeps changing because it's a very cloudy day, so the clouds just kind of keep rolling over the sun. I hope it doesn't bother you too much. As I was saying, what I love about this series is that there's a lot of humor thrown in. Charlie is fairly snarky, there's kind of a lot of banter, and I really enjoy that. And I also kind of like the plot. The characters are fairly likable, and it was great. I can't remember which book kind of started going downhill for me, but I know that I was definitely fed up with book six and seven. 
especially book seven that was just the last straw for me and made me put the series aside for a long time but before that it was a lot of fun so i do highly recommend those earlier books although there is kind of an overarching plot line that you might want to finish if you're anything like me and that kind of thing bothers you because i do kind of have to know how it's all gonna end so i will end up finishing the series although probably not anytime soon because book eight did disappoint me and speaking of book eight let's get back to the review one of the things i didn't like about the previous two books was that we kind of stepped away from the mystery and i liked that this book was kind of back to the roots of charlie investigating things in a more old school way and i did really like the mystery aspect of this plot that was a lot of fun in the end though i gave this a very very generous rating of 3.75 stars just because of some of the aspects of the plot like mystery and I kind of liked the uh, plot twist that made this book feel a little bit fresher even if it didn't last very long and you know that thing that I can't talk about because it would be a major spoiler so yeah, 3.75 stars, but that is a very generous rating. And I don't feel any particular need to jump into the next book, even though this one theoretically ended on a cliffhanger, but it just didn't excite me enough to make me want to keep reading. Although I know that I will, just because I do want to finish the series at some point. By the way, if you hear cawing in the background, those are crows. They've been cawing a lot more in the last month or so and it's a little bit strange maybe it's just a seasonal thing i don't really know that much about crows although i do think that they are really really beautiful and i really really like them so maybe i should do some research into crows i just know that they're really smart and i've read a whole bunch of papers where researchers kind of tracked them doing amazing things so that's one of the biggest reasons why i like them also i just kind of like the idea of an entirely black bird it's very kind of dramatic and it appeals to my mora gothic nature which has kind of become more and more buried in the last few years but it is still there and there's just something about looking into a crow's eyes that makes you feel i don't know you really can see the intelligence there it just they feel smart and kind of interesting they feel like they have a lot of character so i really like crows and the coin doesn't really bother me and i really hope that if you can actually hear it in this video it doesn't bother you as well because I can't really do anything about it. They've just been cawing a lot lately. I feel like I'm kind of very rambly during this update. I don't know what's going on. I don't usually talk so much, but I guess I'm just feeling very talkative today, so I hope you don't mind. Anyways, the dirt on ninth grave means that I completed another challenge, and that challenge was for the character building part of the Swedathon. And one of the things I chose was Il Tyrion, which was to read a book with a red cover or with a crow on the cover, and the Dirt on Ninth Grave actually has a red cover, so it matches the prompt perfectly. And I also finished Lumberjanes Volume 1, so I think I started this like earlier in the week, but I didn't get there very much. And I did finish it during the week, and this was actually something that I was kind of reading during the day, because it's very short and I could just pull it out and read it whenever I had a little bit of time. And I actually gave this 4.5 stars. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but Lumberjanes is a series of graphic novels with a sort of mystery fantasy subgenre. And I believe it is somewhere between middle grade and YA, although half of the book felt more YA and half of it felt more middle grade, but I still thought that it was really, really cute. And that almost didn't bother me. I tend not to read a lot of middle grade just because, well, that's just not my cup of tea. And I only found actually just a few parts of the book that were a little bit too middle grade slash juvenile for me. Most of it was pretty good. And I love the friendship. It's just, it's adorable. I love the humor. It is a lot of fun. And it's just a really, really sweet book. And I'm definitely going to be continuing with this series. Oh, by the way, I think I forgot to say that I actually gave this 4.5 stars. So it's a pretty high rating. I could have gone down to 4. 4.5 is a little bit generous, but I think it does deserve 4. So I am tentatively recommending this series as much as I can from just reading one volume. This book works very well for the Earthling Challenge, which was to read a book with elemental magic. And there was actually a magical water monster in this book, so I think that it fits. So my character, Lumir, is going to be half Earthling and half Eltyrian which I actually think is a pretty fun combination. And the final thing I have to update you on is actually that I started Graceling, which is the book I'm reading for the um, 
reading a book with a map challenge. And I actually had to Google to find books with maps because I have very few physical books I tend to buy or get from the library electronic versions or audiobooks, often a combination of the two so I can kind of go between reading and listening to the audiobook. And this was no exception, so I kind of googled books with maps and this was one of the options that came up and it was on my TBR, so <laughs> I decided to read it for this readathon. And so far I am very much not impressed. I actually started listening to the audiobook for this and I might just switch to reading it kind of exclusively because the audiobook is so annoying. <sighs> ah, they're using music in this very aggressive manner, so you kind of get loud music every minute or two, and it's so annoying. I actually like when there's a little bit of music to create some atmosphere in an audiobook, but not that often. <laughs> you know, every hour or two maybe, but not every few minutes. Jeez. It just kind of takes you out of the narration and instead of being lost in the story, you end up kind of being jolted out of it every little while. Not that there's that much story so far for me to get lost in, and I'm actually already pretty intensely disliking the main character and the writing in general. In the first few pages we get just so much info dumped on us about the world that, I don't know, maybe some readers can actually remember this kind of stuff, but I really can't. I mean, just random names and people and places and things that happen there that I don't know how they're relevant to the story in any way, shape or form. So yeah, <laughs> as you can tell, we're not off to a great start with this book, which is a little bit disappointing because it has been on my TBR for so long and I've been kind of thinking about reading it for years. And I'm only like 5% in, so this is definitely not a promising start. I'm actually kind of worried about this book, but we'll see if it's truly horrific. Maybe I'll DNF it and just pick up something else. <laughs> and that is everything that I had to update you on at the moment. I actually feel like this was a pretty long update. I feel like I've been talking for a while, but yeah, for now this is it. I don't really know what I'm going to do in the near future. I have a lot of work that I need to get through because I did take that week off, so now things kind of piled up. So I think I'm just going to be getting to that. And I will talk to you later when I have more updates about my reading. I don't really have a reading update for you at the moment, and that is just because my update is that I have been editing the vlog and I realized that it's actually getting a little long. I was originally hoping to make this readathon one long vlog, but now I feel like that might not be the best idea because I think that it's just going to be way too long. So I think I'm going to stop the vlog here and continue it in a second part. I really hope that you're enjoying it so far. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in part two. Be you always. Bye!